Welcome back to our virtual classroom here. Uh, we're going to continue our journey talking about slope. Yesterday we learned how to find slope from a table by finding the change in y and the change in x. And we learned how to find the slope from a graph by doing rise over run, which is also change in y over change in x. Um, so today we're going to continue on. Remember our central question is figuring out slope. So we're going to learn one more way to figure out slope. We don't need a graph. We don't need a table. All we need is two coordinates. Wow. Ooh. Ah. Super exciting. All right. How are we ever going to uh, figure out slope just looking at two points without a line or anything? Well, let's look at what we already know. So we know that slope is rise over run, which is another way of saying change in y over change in x, um, like from the table. But aren't coordinates just some x and y pairs? Why, yes, they are. If we want to see how much they change, we just need to subtract them. So change in y over change in x is another saying, way of saying change in y point, change in x point. And when we're talking x and y's, we mean these coordinates. That's x1, that's y1, that's x2, that's y2. And that brings us to the very, very exciting slope formula. Burr, 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 burr. All right, go ahead and hit pause and write all this business down. All right, so our steps for using the slope formula are to label the coordinates. So x1, y1, x2, y2. And then we just plug and chug. So here's our formula. We're going to pop our numbers in there and we're just going to chug our way on through it. So let me show you how that works. All right. So step one again is to label our x's and y's. So this is my x1, y1, x2, y2. And here is my awesome slope formula that I'm just going to plug and chug my way through. So I start with y2 minus y1, negative 4. Don't cut off that extra negative. That's important. Okay. And then I'm going to use x2, which is 2, minus, like it says in my formula, x1. Oops, over there. And again, leave that minus on there. All right, well, what do we know about minus minus? Turns into a plus. Same with this one right here. Loop. And 2 plus 4 is 6. 2 plus 1 is 3. And 6 divided by 3 is 2. So my slope is actually 2. So here they are on a graph, and if I was using just a graph, I'd have my two pretty points, and I would do my rise, which in this case is 6, and I would do my run, which is 3, and I would go 6 over 3, which is 2. It checks out. Let's do another one. All right, so again, I'm going to start by labeling x1, y1, x2, y2. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, what happens if I, like, reverse them? What happens if I have this as my first point, and I call that my x1 and that my y1, and not my x2 and that my y2? It actually doesn't matter. It just works itself out. So don't stress over that. Just whatever order you're giving them or whatever, just x1, y1, x2, y2, and you're good. All right? Here's my, whoops, here's my awesome slope formula here. And I'm going to plug and chug y2 three, minus y1, x2, which is negative 4, minus x1. All right, so my signs are different here, so I'm going to subtract positive wins on top. My signs are the same here, negative plus negative, yeah, same sign. Uh, so I'm going to add them together and keep the sign. So my slope is actually negative one-fifth. Remember, it does not matter where I put that negative sign. I can put it like that. I can put it like this. All the same deal. But since it's a negative slope, predict in your mind which way is that line going to go. You down, right? Okay, so if this was my graph, I would start by labeling my two pretty points, and I would find my rise, which in this case is negative one, and my run, which is five. And remember, my line's going down, so I know it's negative, and my slope would be negative one-fifth. It works. All right, pause and copy this down. 
Okay, we are going to start by finding the slope between point A and point B here. Uh, so let's label it up. X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Um, and you should be writing this right underneath your slope formula. Um, it's Y2, which is 3, minus Y1. And you put that over X2, which is 5, minus X1. All right, starting here with an easy one. What is 3 minus 2? That's 1. What's 5 minus 3? That's 3. And in this case, my slope, my m, is 1 third. Let's try another one. How do we get from c to d? Well, first of all, we need our x's. x1, y1, x2, y2. And I'm going to use my slope formula and plug and chug. All right, y2 minus y1. Whoops. I don't know where I got that from. Y2, let's try that again. Y2 minus Y1, and I put that over X2 minus X1. And again, don't pop off that minus just because there's a negative on there. All right, if it's negative plus negative, you add the same sign. And then minus minus turns into a plus. That is 2. And what is 4 divided by 2? That's 2. And magic triangle boop, 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 tells us that that would be negative. Look, all our friends from integer operations came back to play. Okay, go ahead and hit pause. Grab some scratch paper, and I would like you to try 2 out. That's it, guys. Show up tomorrow with those 2 done. Have any questions that you have available for me don't ever be afraid to ask a question and as always make sure you get a good night's sleep and you know don't forget about that uh, healthy breakfast too all right i will see you tomorrow in class bye